When you are close enough to the water, a cast button prompt will appear. The cast power will start increasing once you begin casting. This line represents the furthest you can cast. You should aim to release the cast before this line, depending on how far you want to cast. When you apply too much power to your cast, the power meter will go red. This will affect your casting distance and accuracy. This button will start reeling in your line. While fishing, you can increase or decrease the rate your line is reeled in by adjusting your reel speed. You can switch between all your rods, so long as you're within close proximity of your rod stand. You will want to use different casting styles based on the desired casting distance. You can switch between the casting methods before committing to a cast. All casts are executed using the same control methods, whether you are using simple or total cast controls. When you get a bite on a lure or float rig, you need to set the hook to ensure the fish cannot escape. Do this by performing a strike. The timing of the strike determines how well the hook is set in the fish's mouth. Setting the hook poorly will make it easier for the fish to escape. The quality of your strike is determined by the swiftness and direction of the strike action and timing after the fish bites. The better the strike quality, the less chance you have of losing the fish. With the hook set, it's time to reel in the fish. Around the water's edge, you will find designated fishing pegs. If you claim a peg, you will be allowed to fish with three rods at the same time. Total cast control is a more advanced method of casting. You can select between basic casting and total cast control from the settings menu. To cast using total cast control, release the bail arm and hold the line, but remember to keep the line held or the bait will drop. When you're ready to cast, draw the rod back over your shoulder while keeping the line held. 
In one quick, compact movement, bring the rod forward and release the line. You want to aim to release the line when the rod is at around the 12 or 1 o'clock position to maximise your cast distance. When fighting a fish, you need to manage the tension on the line. Too low or too high and you're in danger of losing the fish. The drag system can be adjusted to increase or decrease the resistance on the line. If you set the drag system to its maximum, the fish won't be able to pull line from the reel at all, but this will put more tension on your line. If you set it to its lowest setting, the fish will pull the line out easily and swim further away. This will put less tension on your line. Some fish may dive down deep or leap out of the water in an attempt to free themselves. To decrease tension, lower the rod tip and stop reeling. To increase the line tension, raise the rod tip and keep reeling. If the tension bar hits the top, or bottom too much during the fight, the fish can escape. So, aim to keep it in the mid-range as much as possible. Keep the pressure on and eventually the fish will tire out, making it easier to reel in. This icon shows that the fish is exhausted and ready for netting. You will be rewarded with XP and tackle points based on the size and length of the species you catch. Gaining XP will help you level up and become a more experienced angler. Tackle points can be used to buy new equipment and clothing. When you are ready, release the fish back in the water. There are a number of techniques available to help you attract fish to the area around your bait. A spod is used for baiting up a swim to attract fish. The spod rod is cast in the usual way, but does not have a hook, so don't expect to catch any fish on it. The spod is loaded with bait. Every time it lands in the water, it drops its bait, attracting fish to that area. Like with your hook bait, you can change the bait in your spod to any of the compatible baits you own. Different species of fish have their own favourite foods, so be sure to choose the best bait for the species you are targeting. You usually want to bait the same area a couple of times, which is where line clipping is most useful. The line clip limits the amount of line that is allowed off the reel when you cast. By setting the line clip, you'll hit the same maximum distance every time you cast. To increase the chance of getting a bite, you want to aim to bait the area around other rigs you have cast into the water. Another method for baiting up is to use the throwing stick. This is selected in the same way as the spod rod, but has a smaller selection of compatible baits. As the throwing stick will only launch one boilie at a time, you will want to use it a number of times. Use the spod if you want to put a lot of bait in a small area and the throwing stick if you want to spread a smaller amount of bait over a larger area. When you cast out a float rig, a float indicator will become visible. The indicator shows the float's movements while in the water. Pay close attention, as it will indicate when a fish has taken the bait. When the float icon begins twitching, it indicates that a fish is nibbling your bait. This is your cue to get ready to strike, but be patient. If you strike before the fish bites, you won't be able to set the hook and you will lose the fish. The float icon will twitch violently when you get a bite, indicating it's time to strike the rod and set the hook. The quality of your strike is determined by its swiftness, direction of the strike action and timing after the fish bites. The better the strike quality, the less chance you have of losing the fish. With the hook set, it's time to fight the fish. Sometimes, when float fishing, you may wish to alter the hook length. This allows you to adjust how deep below the float your bait is hanging. 
To do this, press this button and use these buttons to adjust the hook length. There are limits to how far you can adjust the hook length, but it can make all the difference when it comes to presenting your bait in front of the fish. Observation and timing are crucial for catching fish on a float rig. So, remain vigilant and you will consistently be netting fish. Your inventory is filled with all the equipment you currently own and can be accessed anywhere on the lake. A preset tackle box is comprised of three rods and you can switch between saved tackle boxes or change an individual aspect of a rod setup. Select any equipment category which you wish to change. Each category displays a list of all compatible equipment options. Some equipment will have dependencies with other items based on fishing style, so changing one item may also change the dependent equipment. For example, you can only equip a drop shot lure if you have a drop shot rig selected, and you can only equip a dead bait if you have a size 2 hook selected. Each piece of equipment has its own unique stats. It's important to be aware of these stats to fish with the equipment effectively. When you cast out, the lure indicator will become visible. The retrieval is the type of action you perform to make a lure move through the water, but it's how you move the lure that can increase the chances of getting bites. The text will show what type of retrieve you are currently performing, and the indicator will change colour to represent the effectiveness of your retrieve. Red indicates the least effective, and green the most optimal. The quality of your retrieval motion will affect your chances of hooking fish. The depth indicator shows the relative position of the lure in the water. Based on the lure's stats, the crankbait is more effective at attracting fish while under a constant or stop and go retrieve. A constant retrieve is performed by constantly reeling in. How fast this crankbait is reeled in will impact the depth it dives to. Depth and retrieve quality are displayed and updated in real time based on your real speed and rod movements. If you want to retrieve at lower depths, try increasing your real speed. You're not going to get a bite on every retrieve, but to increase those chances, you want to keep casting out and retrieving. The longer your lure is in the water, the better chance you have of attracting a bite. This lure is effective using a stop and go retrieve. To perform a stop and go retrieval, reel in at a moderate speed and then stop briefly before reeling again, then repeat. The lure indicator will provide feedback between multiple retrieves. Some lures are effective under multiple retrieval actions, which is indicated by the lure's stats. Looking at the lure's stats, you can see this popper is a top water lure and is most effective at attracting fish while under a twitch or stop and go retrieve. Top water lures will always skim across the top of the water, but how they vibrate on the water's surface is what makes it irresistible to a fish. To perform a twitch retrieve, you want to reel in your line slowly, whilst making quick successive twitches of your rod tip in the desired direction, followed by a pause. When drop shotting or performing a twitch retrieve, you may want to manipulate the lure with a bit more finesse. To do this, hold down the finesse control button as this limits the range of movement on your rod. With this button held down, move your rod in any direction to make short, sudden twitches. Fishing an area with the right equipment and retrieval techniques is essential for attracting and triggering bites from predatory fish. Finesse fishing is a more advanced technique and is all about making smaller movements to get the lure to move the way you want to. After you have cast out, position your rod at an angle you are happy with, then press and hold the finesse button. Doing this 
will reduce how far you can move your rod, while still allowing you to make small jerks and twitches. Perfect for making your lure act like an injured bait fish. With the finesse button held down, you can also press the tap button. Do this when you are drop shotting and you will send vibrations down your rod, making your lure dance and wiggle in front of the hungry fish. Your boat is equipped with an electronic fish finder. This system allows you to see the depth of the lake bed and where fish are positioned both under and around your boat. The line at the bottom shows the depth and contour of the lake bed you are travelling over and the fish icons show a fish's location and depth. The furthest right section shows what was beneath the boat one second previously. This fish passed underneath the boat around three seconds ago. So, if you are travelling at speed in your boat, the fish may now be some distance behind you. The size of the fish icon displayed is related to the size of fish detected under the water. When you find a spot you want to fish, stop your boat and switch into the fishing position to start fishing. Thank you.